Thank you, uh, Anna Levine, um, for all you've done for this event. And Llewellyn, I'm so excited to be in this. It's my first author's uh, event with Llewellyn, this wonderful publishing company that has put out my new book, Angels and Goddesses. And I'm also really excited about being able to share with um, all you friends and readers uh, some keys that are not exactly as they are in my book, but some material adapted from the book. And uh, because they're new keys, they're for working with angels for world peace. And um, we love um, finding out where you're from, like you're putting up, um, people have been putting up, they're watching us from Australia, from uh, uh, the UK. And um, I'm transmitting from Mexico. We love finding out where you're from. Um, can't answer questions right now because kind of have the information packed in from my book, stuff you're not going to find in other places. And um, I just really appreciate uh, the, your participation and uh, Llewellyn making this wonderful event possible for me and my colleagues who also have some really interesting topics. So stick around. And um, we're going to, I'm going to be sharing from a PowerPoint presentation that I developed. Um, and there are so many ways to work with angels. Angels really enrich uh, our lives. We're moving on to the first, uh, to the next slide here. Um, the, these three ways that I'm going to focus on are finding and sharing inner peace, applying angelic force fields, in writing to angels and goddesses. And the, there are things that will not only help um, optimize us as channels for world peace, but also really make big changes in your life. So stick around and um, we, we're expecting you to find some exciting things. Uh, these slides will also allow you if you wanna take pictures of them. Um, of course, there we explore these topics with a lot more depth and detail, some of them in, in my book and a whole lot of other topics as well. So we've got um, finding inner peace and sharing that energy. Um, the antidote for aggression, for mindless aggression, which war is uh, so often, is forgiveness. This is an energy that is powerfully transmuting and healing. And it's something that we do within that, that's not so easy to achieve. Um, but with the help of angels and also their companion spirits, it, it becomes much easier. And also we can then connect this energy with the world atmosphere in special ways I'm going to share today. I'm going to mention really quick, because one of the things we do in my book is get into ancient technology that relates to um, angelic intelligence, which is the subtitle of my book. And uh, there are two different places in the world in which we find these ancient roots of understanding of forgiveness as part of peace and part of getting along with others in the community. Ubuntu in Africa, which is um, a philosophy very inherent to tribal harmony, and um, that was also related to the goddess, Egyptian goddess Mat, because a lot of the roots of, of these kind of spiritual principles in terms of ancestral wisdom go back to these goddess cultures. And in Peru, Munai, which is an alchemical practice, it's considered fundamental to life to be working on maintaining a loving vibration towards the earth, towards oneself and towards others, including forgiveness. And as we do, it also charges our light light body, which is a central um, part of angelic intelligence. And um, moving on to the next slide, the, the archangel that's related to the different spirits that are purple, the purple strip in the rainbow, the archangelic rainbow, which has seven colors, is a sad kill. And um, that's how it's pronounced, Sad, Sad Kiel. And uh, although he doesn't care if you mispronounce his name, Sad Kiel and his twin flame Amethyst, his feminine complement, um, they, they work for alchemy, for transmutation, for freedom. And um, we can call on them and connect with their energies, and they will help us with the process of achieving, uh, achieving forgiveness. Um, Sad Kiel does a lot of other things besides help forgive, also transmutation, 
alchemy, relates to prayer, relates to peace, relates to justice, and to release a whole lot of other wonderful things to the, the healing power of, of the earth. And um, so we, we cover a lot of these topics more widely in the book. And we'll see um, next some images of purple flowers, which are also spirits that are within Sadkiel's domain. And um, it, this is a really fascinating aspect to me of angelic intelligence, that flower spirits are actually sentient beings that will help us in our inner work in different ways. And different colored flowers, different kinds of flowers have different energies for this. And also we don't have to pick the flowers or have them physically or even have the flower essence physically to connect with their energies because like angels, they are on a subtle plane and they will respond to our attention. So here we see some images of purple flowers and we're, we're going to see specific ways that you can work with them a couple of um examples taken from a much richer offering in the book um and in the next images we're going to see um close-ups of dark flowers these are a particular kind of purple and dark flowers that have um special functions uh spiritually which are really beautiful and fascinating and the dark flowers can range from a, a dark purple to a, um, the, the flower in the middle here is like a deep uh, violet with a little bit of a rosy color in it. And there are also black flower spirits, black rose spirits uh, that will help us in very special ways, which I think you're going to find as a Llewellyn reader, I'm sure you're going to find fascinating. Um, these flower spirits, actually work from the subtle plane to pull out of us things that we can't, we can't deal with ourselves or we don't want to. So this is a facet of um, ancestral spiritual technology where we're not only seeing that we can use affirmations and invocations and visualizations, but there are these other kinds of activity that the spirits um, help us with. And in this case, we're going to see in the next image um, a, some steps that that you can use. These are um, adapted from the book uh, that you can use to connect with dark flower spirits in, in a simple way. And here we're applying it for forgiveness, but there are many other potential applications, including like releasing uh, the karma of others, releasing guilt, releasing uh, sorrow, and so forth. And But here we're, we're focusing it on the forgiveness related to inner peace. So you want to sit or lie in a comfortable position with your eyes closed and with your attention on your breath, and then visualize a large black or purple rose floating in the air before you. When you do this, you're apt to see a flower. I mean, it will probably spontaneously appear and you will know exactly what color it is. Uh, these spirits are around on the subtle plane. They're, they're happy to be called on. And then we can repeat out loud and also mentally words like these, dark flower spirit, please pull from me any harsh thoughts towards myself and others, or towards myself or others. And then feel, spend several minutes, six is one of the goddess numbers, feeling how the flower's magnetic force is drawing those feelings from you, almost like a magnet, like the flower is a magnet, or it's like the gravity of Mother Earth that pulls um, the purple leaves in, in autumn to her through the magnetism, through the gravity of the earth. And in a similar manner, these flower spirits work to pull from us, in this case, harsh thoughts. So we would normally spend about six minutes after the request feeling how uh, this is being pulled from us and finding a new level of, of peace in the process. It's so beautiful. And moving on, I'm just going to mention that um, mandalas are also a wonderful part of angelic intelligence. And um, likely some of you already use mandalas in some way because they're increasingly popular. 
And there are mandalas for many things in, in my book. I suggest mandalas. Um, the, the image at the center is uh, an archetype of focus, what we're, what we're organizing our being around. I mean, this is um, universally speaking in terms of, of mandalas. And um, we can use different angels, different flower spirits, different light beings at the center to connect with those energies. And right now we're going to see a, an example of a mandala for uh, forgiveness specifically. And um, this is, I have this physically, uh, Anna is there, I don't know if we can go back to um, my image here, if that's too difficult to for them to be able to see a, a physical example. Okay, here I am in the screen. I'll take, I'll use that little window. Um, this is a, a purple cardboard, as you can see, with a circle of images of flowers. These, these flowers have been copied and, and um, pasted. And um, so the circle, the edge of the circle are the purple flowers. And in the middle of the circle, we've got a dark purple flower and then we've got little smaller images around the image in the center these are of uh sadkiel the the purple angel and his twin flame amethyst and you can find uh these kinds of images on on google you could also draw them if you prefer if you prefer to do it on a white background with and draw a circle of purple flowers you could do that as you're drawing the flowers consciously connect to their spirit because the, these are wonderful sentient beings, and I know you're going to love working with them. Um, the, the sentence on the image we're looking at, I surround myself with the purple flowers of the planet, is something you can write on your mandala. And see this circle like gathering around you as you say it. It's as though the the circle with the flowers on the mandala is surrounding you. And you can feel these uh, purple flowers gathering around you in a big circle and ask that they release my love, that is released from my heart, my love towards myself and all others. So we'd, we'd be repeating this thought again for um, some number related to the goddess. And uh, it could be six minutes, nine minutes, 15 minutes. And, but say you use six minutes, you're going to be repeating this thought slowly with the tension. And as we finish it, releasing that love, projecting that love, that, that inner connection is actually very um, decisive to the results we're going to have with this. And so you can take a picture of this affirmation that we've got up here, or um, if you prefer, write it down. Um, of course, in the book, there are a whole lot of affirmations and invocations. And after you've done this uh, for six, nine, or 15 minutes, you're going to feel uh, a different kind of energy in your heart. And so once you have that energy, you can share this peaceful um, vibration, which actually has a transmuting force on our relationships, on our own aura, on our whole vibration. And it's going to be transmuting our relationships. It's going to be allowing our good to flow. It's going to be bringing an inner peace that's very special that tends to dissolve problems. It tends to dissolve low vibrational feelings, anger, resentment, and all of those um, hostile energies that tend to contribute on a collective level to the possibility of war. If we don't have that um, base of opposition between people, opposition between groups, between nations, between um, genders, between uh, all these divisions that people make 
it's dissolved with forgiveness and there's a vibrational change with the next slide. We're seeing an affirmation that, that you can use. That's really a great way of saying this affirmation, even just for like three to five minutes after you've done the work with a mandala is um, a wonderful way to share this energy. And you'll be surprised if you use it to uh, go out afterwards and feel this inner connection with uh with people, even if you don't even speak with them. Um, the love and peace I feel in my heart connect me with the love and peace in hearts around the world. And we surround the entire planet with victorious love and peace now. And so this is one way that it, as you can imagine, it's quite transformational, not just for world peace, but for inner peace and for our whole energy field, because forgiveness is really magical. It can contribute to physical healing in uh, very significant ways. I'm a, I'm a successful healer and um, with a whole lot of uh, apparent miracles. And I know for a fact, I can, I can really vouch for uh, forgiveness as a wonderful element in your own healing processes. And we're gonna move on to tips to apply angelic force fields. Now, I really love this because um, the, the technology of ancient civilizations gives us new alternatives to apply our inner connections. And some of them, like the one we just saw is kind of involved. This is a very simple way that's only going to take you, um, like say you could do this even two or three minutes a day, and you're going to be uh, assisting in an important manner, the movement, energy movement for peace. Um, and I'm going to mention if we could uh, move on to the next image, I'm going to mention um, the types of light beings that are really great to work with when we're looking at appearances of conflict. In the middle, we're looking at an image of hosts of a host, a legion of blue angels. These are related to Archangel Michael, who is the divine liberator, who is victorious. And I remember when I first started studying about angels, I had already been since childhood into science of mind and um, all kinds of inner work. But the, the angels brought a new dimension. My first uh, thought about Michael was, why is an angel carrying a sword? I mean, it was like, it just, it didn't really uh, resonate. And um, then I discovered that, and as I share in the book, there is this uh, necessity in spiritual work a lot of times for um, a special kind of force of determination, or if we need a miracle, divine intervention to work with our own um, inner meditations and visualizations and affirmations. And um, ancient technology gives us also windows into this, like these um, ancient goddesses that are colleagues of Michael. Uh, we've got Sekhmet on the left. She's an Egyptian goddess, a lion goddess, who is often associated with war, but in her ancient origins, that wasn't the case. She's actually a protectress. And yes, she does have this energy of dominion and determination and of overcoming vanquish, the ability to vanquish lower vibrational forces. And um, then we've got Michael, who we don't have the image here of his sword, but you've, I'm sure you've seen them and they're all over the place, whose weapons are also ways of applying our um, spiritual power in, in not just subtle manners, but um, with victory, with a stance of victory and with the support of divine intervention when it's necessary, like to transmute the kind of very low vibrational energies that there are in places like Ukraine and other places, zones of, of conflict of the world. And um, they these these beings can move them out. Then on the, the right-hand side, we've got an image of Simha Mukha, who is a pre-Buddhist Tibetan goddess who has a whole lot in common with Archangel Michael. It's just really amazing. She also it, uh, carries a weapon. Sekhmet's weapon are her teeth and claws, which are very sharp and powerful. And Simha Mukha's weapon is sometimes a lance and sometimes a copper sword. Copper is a metal associated with Venus and with the power of love. And Simha Mukha 
is extremely powerful. One of her names is the mother of all conquerors. And um, she's really great at vanquishing opposing forces and transmuting them into compassion. So these are three beings that are wonderful to call on when we want, there's, there's some apparent negativity, like in the case of war that, that we really want to wipe out and shield the area or shield those involved. And so when we say call on uh, angelic forces or connect with the angelic forces, a really simple and wonderful way to do this is like to imagine the, this um, layer of blue force field covering the area and and just connect with that image and we can see um, in our minds like in, uh, a legion of innumerable blue angels and their blue radiation filling up that area and we can also see um, innumerable manifestations of, of Sekhmet or Simharmukha which are are really interesting. Um, I go into this more deeply in the book, and my time is going up. Out, out, but there, um, the these will help vanquish and transmute the the forces. There it was was I've got a group in Mexico. It's absolutely wonderful. Um, I I have several groups, but one of them is a group that's working there. We're praying, volunteers praying for for world peace, and. Um, so we are using these kinds of connections, calling on these beings as part of um, this activity. I'm going to show you a very, very special tool to connect with Michael's and these goddesses freeing energies um, in a minute. First, I'm going to just show you that after we started this work and I was visualizing these force fields in Ukraine, um, I came across a, uh, an image similar to the next one that is um, of carpets of... Uh, these are these are Middle Eastern handmade uh, beautiful rugs with uh, and a lot of them had lions on them and the lion is a symbol of victory particularly the lioness the the huntress that can be moving in the dark and um, with her amazing special senses preying upon um, those areas of negative energies that we can't get at or see ourselves. And um, so I found this really interesting because it, uh, and, I, and it helped me to imagine these, um, these beings, light beings carpeting, literally carpeting the area of Ukraine. So the next um, and final key that I'm going to share is perhaps the most amazing in terms of its power. And um, these are letters to Archangel Michael. And because when we write a letter, a letter is an archetype of communication. And even though they're not used very much anymore, um, a letter has all of that energy of opening a doorway of connection. And so when we write letters to angels, and we also include affirmations, we are lifting up the energy of our positive prayers and intentions to a higher frequency. And in the case of Archangel Michael, we're talking about things that are miraculous. I mean, I'm talking about situations in which it seems like there's no answer, no way out, that you, all, all that's going to work is a miracle. And the letters to Archangel Michael are a wonderful way to do this. And I, and I give many examples in my book. And um, in the case of Ukraine, which is, we're talking about these material forces that are fighting, human material forces that are fighting. And so we bring in the angelic forces and there's an energy of divine victory that is able to, it's not like fighting with on the same level, it's like transmuting this. And this is um, an example of a way that you can do this. And in my um, WhatsApp group for this, uh, particular activity of prayers for world peace. I mean, we uh, we we put up all day the ones that are we do our letters and we put them up on the group. So it's like our way of checking in and saying, you know, I'm really doing this. And um, you can do this on your own, or you, maybe you would like to do or adapt any of these suggestions with a group. And um, there are lots of groups doing wonderful things right now, and, and it, it's like a a network 
And in the case of a specific letter for world peace, you might say, ha have at the beginning, at the top of the page, make it look like a letter, not just like a series of notes, because again, the, the archetype of the letter opens a special window. And so we're going to say, for instance, to archangels Michael and Faith, Faith is his divine complement and also the most important energy that he helps us with, and goddesses Sekhmet and Simhamukha. And then, we're, then we could uh, address them, dear angels and goddesses, just like we were writing to a person. And then make some sort of uh, appropriate greeting, like here, I bless you and praise you. I, I call on you to please pour your force fields into Ukraine and other areas of apparent conflict, cutting through low vibrational fields and generating a powerful shield that protects all there and the entire planet in relation to these situations and transmuting them into compassion. And we can add in there, this, this came through divine guidance and, and I think it's really wonderful. Please work with the guardian angels of, and then you can name per, pertinent leaders with the guard or just say with the guardian angels of, of leaders related to these events and and all and of all in a position to support diplomatic outcomes and defend world security and peace, fortify them to persist in those efforts with courage. And so that's going to be our petition. Now, if you're also working on something personal that in which you feel like you need a breakthrough, like um, your, your son, your daughter, your, your parent, somebody that's close to you, or somebody you're worried about that you, that you want uh, them to somehow have an awakening or be freed from an addiction or whatever, you can add in that into the petition. You can include it in the letter along with your um, request for world peace. And um, there are a whole lot of, a lot of applications of these letters, and I share many of them in my book. And um, so then we say, for instance, I send up these words for your perfect use, colon, and then you're going to write in your affirmations right into the letter. You're going to be repeating, feeling, and including your affirmations. Um, and this combination of the angel connection, which can be also strengthened if you want to use a blue colored pen. Um, some people in my group put up uh, blue sheets of paper. You know, we're doing on a, a sheet of blue paper it, because the whole um, activation of our inner senses, seeing the blue, feeling the blue, and also, which is a protective color mainly. And then at the same time, um, combining the angel connection and our own consciousness is going to make um, a really powerful, powerful missive. And so we're going to add in again, six, nine, or 15. If you really need a miracle, um, you can use 15. The people in the group are using 15 affirmations in um, their letter. And um, I'm going to dictate an affirmation like a suggestion for this application, you could say, uh, the people in Ukraine are not alone. God is with them, or if you prefer, spirit is with them, or your favorite word, divinity is with them. And it uses infinite substance to manifest protection, security and supply for them now. Um, a lot of times when we're working with these kind of tools, we get signs, lots of signs, because there's guidance coming through, guidance from the angelic forces, guidance from spirit. And for instance, um, I came across an article about um, that my sister Susan posted about uh, older women in Ukraine who are having it especially tough right now because their kids had been able to leave the country and they were stuck there and um, they were living on this uh, some kind of um, tiny pension and um, they felt very lonely besides the physical risk and so forth. 
And when we get um, an image like this of a certain group of people or people in a certain situation, the children in Afghanistan that we um, we read about having really challenging situations, the the little girls who are being sold into marriage at a very young age and so forth, these these sorts of very personal images can help us give that human touch that is the the compassion and this uh, this feeling in our heart of personal love and concern for the people that are actually going through more challenging situations. And this will give a life to our prayers when we're putting it in there. You know, we're saying uh, they're they're not alone and they're not without support. Um, the the power of spirit is with them. and and spirit has infinite substance that it uses to manifest protection, defense, and positive intervention now. And so that, that kind of energy, that, that special love vibration is um, the element that makes us part of this team that, that we're working with, with the light beings. And um, that um, I think you will really enjoy uh, anybody who who likes using affirmations, invoking light beings is apt to uh, have a lot of fun with these tools and also to feel a new level of um, transmission in their inner work and um, our ability to participate right from our own space. It's so exciting to have tools that just from wherever we are, uh, allow us to be significant channels in the transmutation of of events and collaborate in positive ways. And and I personally, I I don't you know when we first heard about um, the invasion in Ukraine and stuff, there's this feeling of uh, what sorrow and and a kind of an impotency. But we're really not powerless. We have this wonderful power, and we can use it with our divine circuits right where we are and in connection to the light being. So I hope um, you've enjoyed this share. I really appreciate it. My my groups in Mexico are all are absolutely wonderful. Um, and I, I also have a group in English. If you want to follow me, check my webpage, which is crystalpomeroy.com. I'm also on Facebook with the same name. On um, And um, I invite you to, uh, if you have any questions you'd like to address on this topic, go ahead and do so. And um, of course, uh, get my book. Uh, I thank Llewellyn so much. They did such a beautiful job with everything, with the cover, with everything. And uh, through this great publisher, we're getting information that has never been published before. Um, and and you have access to that also. And it's an honor for really an honor for me to be a channel in uh, your your spiritual work and adventures. Thank you so much for participating for for being with us today.